Thank you all for joining us here. Uh, we've got a guest with us today, Mr. Brother Chase Frow, who is a former uh, New Garden uh, person, and his family, uh, minus his wife Brianna, who we all miss. She has other responsibilities this morning. Um, but they're with us this morning, so we'll make sure to welcome them. Um, this last week, um, some of us went to Camp Sunrise out of Hillmont Christian Camp. Um, would either of y'all boys like to share something that you liked about camp? No. The pool. The pool. Yeah, the pool's pretty fun. The pool's pretty fun. Isaac, do you want to share something about it? Um, so, the fifth grade is about to play Tragic Goodness, which is basically a vegetable medley with a dark ball. All right, so they were throwing bananas and dodgeballs at each other, from what I understand. Um, we talked about how we are on the case, reading the Bible, trying to understand um, the life that God has in store for us, looking to the Bible for answers when we don't know what to do. Uh, so that was a really uh, awesome week that we had at Camp Sunrise. So that's awesome. We've got some youth group students going to Nashville Work Camp today. Yeah. Raise your hand. We're going to Nashville Work Camp. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. It's going to be really fun. Uh, we're going to be painting a house together and uh, getting to know each other better, having a great time. Um, and then the next week, we're going to youth camp, Camp Telos. Woo, that's going to be fun too. And then. We're going to VBS the next week, okay? So if you're a potty trained preschooler through fifth grader, VBS is for you. Please uh, sign up. You can sign up at newgarden.church slash events. So that's gonna be a really awesome thing. Um, yeah, so today is Super Duper Family Sunday. Yes, Miss Laura. Who's going to Camp Kellogg? Bentley, me and Madeline are going. It's going to be great. All right. And uh, it's going to be really fun. So, yeah, he is, that was understood. Um, so uh, today is Super Duper Family Sunday, which means we are going to experience what our children get to experience each and every week in our kids' area. And we get to participate all together. It's going to be really great. Um, and uh, I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Chase Froud up. Uh, and he's going to share with us about what his organization that he works with, Living Hope for Honduras, does um, and how we can partner with that maybe next summer by joining and taking a group down there into Honduras. So that's going to be uh, really awesome. Uh, I'll pray for us and then I will turn us over to Mr. Chase. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning thankful that we have um, a place to be in such a fun group of people to be with. Uh, God, we just ask that uh, you will be with us, be with Chase this morning, and um, God, help us to know how we can participate in what you're doing all over our world and in our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, good morning. It's good to be back. I've got 10 minutes, and i got 32 slides, so <laughs> we can do this, all right? All right, very cool. This way? All right, cool. All right. So again, uh, it's good to be here this morning. I do work with uh, Living Hope, that is Esperanza Viva. In Spanish, that does mean Living Hope. Uh, and uh, we have a vision of encouraging a life full of hope for those who are in Honduras, and especially this is the Agalta Valley where a lot of our folks live. Um, just wanted to kind of share with you this morning, real briefly, uh, about what our mission is and who our people are down in Honduras. Uh, and then a little bit later, maybe about how we can get involved uh, as a church there in Wallaco, Honduras. So we have a mission statement. Uh, we want to model the love of Jesus through relationships, education, and community development while encouraging ind individuals to flourish. And so you'll see kind of through our principles and practices and what we do down there, how this is accomplished. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of where we're at there in Honduras, this is, of course, the capital there in Tegucigalpa, and we're there a little bit north uh, of, of Pudicapa and just above Catacombs as well. It's about a four-hour trek, uh, four, four-and-a-half-hour trek from the airport to our compound there in uh, Guadalajara, and that's where we've been for 25-plus years. 
They've been serving there. It began as an outreach uh, through a church uh, in Georgia, uh, in LaGrange, Georgia, uh, through the Broad Street Church of Christ. One of the elders there went to Guadalajara, loved it, and started really building Christian community there. And speaking of that, this is kind of our ministry timeline. Uh, good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Um, anyways, this is our ministry timeline. And so Bob Walters was our founder. He's still alive. He's 90 years old this year. Um, they started uh, focusing on Christian community. And then we grew into scholarships as well. We have two children's homes that we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, so I want to introduce you first to our Living Hope staff. Um, I'm, the fo I'm the only full-time guy here in the States. Uh, but we do have about 15 full-time folks who serve day in and day out there uh, in our in the, in the mission there. And so Pablo Padilla right here, uh, he's been around since about 2004. He serves as our group uh, coordinator. He does a lot of the construction projects that we do as well. Uh, and he works with a lot of the churches that are associated with Living Hope. Uh, and then my good friend here is Victor Sanchez. Uh, he does a lot of the accounting and financials, and he works with the groups, he works with the farm, he works at the children's home as well. He is in, he has his hands in everything just because he is on the uh, operations and finance team. And then to his uh, left and Pablo's left, that's our chair, uh, that's Johnny Pilgrim, and so he's been the chair of the board of Living Hope for some time now. And so if we were there celebrating uh, a school. Uh, we also have two children's homes. We'll mention more of that here in a minute. Uh, this is Naman and Olga, their son, Joe and Ael. Uh, they've been working with us for about five years now. They are now the directors of our children's home. And so all these folks you will meet uh, if you make the trip down to Honduras, they help lead the, the children's home, which has 20 young girls uh, there currently. We have two sets of house parents because we have two houses that host, that, that host uh, 10 girls apiece right now. Mario and Lucia, they started last September. Rogelio, Damaris, and their two children, Ruth and Jose, uh, have been there for about three years now as well. These folks um, are called to serve these girls. It is amazing to see how they minister each and every day, how they take care of these uh, young girls from 18 months old all the way to 20 years of age. Uh, they uh, create such a great family environment for these young girls. And it's just amazing to see uh, the progress some of these girls make. Just want to take you on a real quick virtual tour of Living Hope's compound. So if you come on a trip with us, we have uh, this small compound area here. Uh, to the right, right here, and to the far right is where the church is, where the church meets. And those are actually uh, rooms for um, groups who come in. So there's uh, bunk beds there as well. And further down, there's a, a kitchen. Uh, that, that right here is some open air space for groups to hang out with. So we have great space. We also have an extra building that can hold up to 10 more folks. So in, in all, we have plenty of room for like 30 uh, folks, but we kind of like the 20 number as well. Um, that's our kitchen. And there's kind of a picture of bunk beds. So very familiar to camp. If you were camp last week, Evan and I, the whole family, we were camp last week. So we know what this kind of reminds us of. So it's definitely kind of a camp setting. Uh, great food, great Honduran cook staff that does a lot of good cooking for us throughout the week. This is our farm about 10 minutes from um, the compound in Guadalajara. So this is about 10 minutes away. It's about 170 acres. We do have a farm that we work with. We have some crops that are go growing right now, corn, watermelon, and, and cantaloupe. Um, this is our director's house. This is where Naman lives. And then further in is where the children's home actually is. And so on a trip, you definitely get to see this multiple times. We get to spend some time hanging with the girls. And this is uh, kind of a picture of the girls' home and the one on the left as well. So this is kind of our activity statement. This is what we focus on. Uh, Living Hope cares for children. We provide educational opportunities and we nurture Christian community. That's kind of our three main areas. Um, we care for children. Right now, we do have uh, 20 young uh, girls in our care. We get these. We receive these young ladies uh, from the state of Honduras, from the government of Honduras. They come from all different backgrounds, as you can imagine. Um, and so we care for them. Uh, the, the, the house parents and the staff. Uh, we have about eight part-time aunts. We call them tias, who serve part-time and work with these young girls. They have. Uh, go, they go to school, uh, they go to health classes, they do all kinds of things. Um, and it's just amazing to see uh, some of the activities they get to do and, and trips they get to go on as well. Those are our two houses. 
um, Nanny's Castle is there on the left, and uh, Lynn's Castle is there on the right, as well as an education building that we're building out for these young girls. They're gonna have a computer lab in there, they're gonna have a library in there, there'll be some staff offices. There's also a stimulation room for younger girls that we have as well. So it's a really great campus. There's some more pictures of it. This building was actually inaugurated in 2022 in January, as soon as I started with Living Hope. And so you can see the, the kind of decorations there for that day. There's another picture of uh, Nani's Casa. Those are some of the girls there in, in our home. Like I said, they average between 18 months old. We, we do have an 18 month old and we go all the way up to 19 years of age. All right, the second thing is Living Hope provides educational opportunities. Um, we do a scholarship program every year. And so typically we have 250 so students come uh, and request an interview. And so those are pictures of students waiting to be interviewed. We give them a $375 scholarship every year to go to school. It's secondary school or university. Um, and so we do some interviews and we usually give around 150 of those scholarships um, to uh, students who show great need and and have great grades as well and so it's a great opportunity we do this in january it's very cool to see it's very cool to see all the students very excited about um, getting those scholarships there's a few more pictures here i'm talking a little bit and we're having an interview there we also have translators that help us uh, do the interviews one thing that was especially cool last year's we got to do is we we got some grants money and so what we did in the school this is right here um, in Guadalajara about five minutes from our facilities and so this school right here as you can tell was how it was working seven days a week teachers were there seven days a week uh, this these two buildings weren't done there was a space in between and the other the other building was very old and dilapidated and so with some funds we were able to finish out the whole building uh, inside and out, paint of course as well, uh, make it look really nice. And then we added where this was, there was nothing. And we went ahead and added a new classroom for the students. And we added a director's room as long as with um, a teacher's work room. And so it was incredible to see this. And those pictures before of me and Pablo and me and Victor and Johnny, those were day of the celebration where 250 people from the community came out to enjoy this three and a half hour celebration for this new school. It was awesome to see the kids were there, the students were there. They had uh, singing and dancing, they had poems, they had speeches. There were, there were diplomats from all over the country there to see the inauguration of this school. And it was great to kind of be a part of that day with them. All right, last thing, Living Hope uh, nurtures Christian community. Uh, this is where it all started. This is where it flows from. If we go to a village, we're going to go to a village that we've been ministry and working and serving with uh, for a long time. And so if we go to a village where we want to give scholarships, this is a village where our churches are a part of, uh, where our ministers serve in. And so this has kind of been the, the bedrock of what Living Hope has done for the last 25 plus years. Uh, currently, uh, these are our ministers here. Um, Pablo's in the picture as well, but we have Osento and Kevin and Enrique and Samuel and Victor and, and Melvin Montez. So it's uh, great to meet these ministers who work and worship in their villages. Think very rural, think uh, very small villages of two to 300 people um, who really love to have that connection and community. And they have a church building about half the size of this room and they gather together 30, 40, 50 people. And so it's really neat to see uh, just their dedication. Speaking of trips, uh, working with the Christian community, we do do a lot of uh, floor work. A lot of houses in the community don't have concrete floors. So a lot of times our teams will do some, some work uh, with, the, with our cement mixers and, and providing floors. Uh, of course, you'll spend a lot of time at the children's home with the girls, getting to know them. Um, we also focus on uh, maybe a VBS or hang out with the Wallaco youth group, which is really great. Uh, we want you to learn when you come down there. We want you to learn more about the culture there in Honduras, the worldview, and, and really participate in the ministry. And we want you to grow. We want you to connect and see what God is doing uh, in Honduras. Um, I'll skip over these. We're running out of time. Um, but our next phase, what we're looking for in the future, is how we can care for more young girls. Uh, I didn't tell you that um, the need for Honduran uh, orphanages is, is really pretty um, pretty paramount at this point. And per capita, there's five times more orphans in Honduras than there, Honduras than there is in the States. And so there's a growing need uh, for more orphanages. And right now, our capacity is 24. 
uh, but we're dreaming and praying how we could uh, maybe reach to the to the 36 number as well. Proximal Paso is how we're going to connect with our girls who are phasing out of the children's home. Uh, they're getting older, 19, 20 years of age, going on to college, uh, going on to trade school, or going into the workforce. So that's something that we're working on right now. Uh, more ministry efforts. There's more villages, rural villages that we work with that we want to connect in. Uh, strengthen our scholarship ministry, um, what that may look like in the future. And our farm expansion is uh, ongoing because we have a great farm opportunity. Uh, we're, we're hoping to have um, more, um, more farming in the future with, when it comes to corn and beans and watermelon and uh, cantaloupe. So uh, join us on Facebook. So like and follow us there. Uh, keep up with you. I know New Garden does. Um, but go ahead and do that individually. And then come on a service trip. I left some of my pamphlets out there, uh, right there with Paul and on the, on the red table. Uh, I'll be here after church, and I'm sure I'll see you in, in the, the next few weeks and months as well. Love to come, talk with you all, connect with you more. I hope Michael is coming with me in September on a trip, uh, and then he'll be able to share more about uh, Living Hope as well. Thanks for the time this morning. Thank you so much, Chase. We're excited to get to know more about Living Hope for Honduras and how maybe we can partner with you. So thank you for being here. So it's Super Duper Family Sunday, and what do we do first thing in the cafeteria on Sundays, Caroline? Sing and dance. So on your feet, if you are able, we've got some songs to sing. Here we go. Wow,
which means it was the end of a series. So today is the beginning of a new series. And this month we are in the series called Ready, Set, Move. Does that sound familiar? Yes. And we're going to be talking about something called faith. Can anyone, anyone, raise your hand and tell me what is faith? Anyone? Caroline. It's trusting, I think. Oh, trusting. Trust has a lot to do with faith. So this is what we're going to be talking about when we say faith. Trusting, very good, in what you can't see because of what you can see. So when we think about God, we can't always see God. I don't know what God's face looks like, right? But we can see what God does in our lives and other people's lives. So today... I'm going to need some helpers 
there's going to be people who are actors and people who are readers, okay? So, you, I've got, raise your hand if you would like to be a reader only. There is a, there is one role that's an actor and a reader. Just a reader? All right, keep your hand up, just a reader. You don't take that long. You want to just read? You don't want to. Just oh yes. All right. Thank you. Do I have any? I need two just actors. All right. Come here. Yes. Put on an outfit. I have one that works for you. Is there one person who wants to act and read? Okay, Caroline, because you don't have any lines yet, right? All right, find an outfit, and these will be your lines. I'm putting them right here. All right. So, All right, our actors are getting ready. So, over the past few weeks, we've been talking in our kids' area about how Jesus lived, he died, and then he rose again. And then after that, he visited his friends, and then was the beginning of the church. And then the book of Acts, is it like an Acts, like a Acts? No. Like actions that the apostles did. So it's all about what the church was doing right after Jesus was uh, crucified and resurrected. And today we're talking about a guy named Saul. And here's Saul. He's wearing a green hat. Everyone say, hi, Saul. Hi, Saul. Here is Saul on the screen as well. Saul was a Roman citizen, and he studied the scriptures, right, Saul? Show us yeah. how much you study the scriptures. And in the book of Acts, we see Saul, that he was growing up. He studied the scriptures. And as people began putting their faith in Jesus, the church started to grow really, really fast. A few weeks ago, we talked about that in one day, 3,000 people were baptized. The, the church was growing so, so fast. But Saul, he didn't like that. He thought that Jesus was not the way to go. And he, in fact, even started arresting people who were Christians and taking them to prison. So here's what Saul wanted to do. The Christians were scattering. They were going all different places. So Saul put his Bible down, and he went to visit the high priest. And he said, high priest. High priest. <laughs> he said, I want to go and find the people who are following Jesus so I can put them in jail. I want to go and find the people that are following Jesus and put them in jail. So the high priest gave his approval. Yes. Yay! Good deal. Oh. I don't even know who I am yet. And then the high priest had a seat. So here's where Saul went. He decided he was going to go. He was going to go to Damascus. And Damascus was about 150 miles that way. So he starts going down this road. It probably would have taken him two weeks to travel there. And he was going and going and going. And then, wait, when he was about right here, come back, Saul. Something happened. He was on the road. And then a bright light started going all around him. There it is. It started going all around him. And he was like, what's going on? I don't know. And suddenly, he heard a voice. Where's my reader number one? Loudly. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? So he heard this voice, and he asked, who is that? I'm alone. I don't, who is this voice that I hear? Who's there? <laughs> and then... Where's number two? 
the voice said, I am Jesus. I'm the one you are opposing. Saul was hearing from Jesus. And so he knew, turn around Saul. Saul thought Jesus was just a troublemaker, that he was just coming to stir things up and mess everybody up. But now he's hearing the voice of Jesus. And the voice now said what he needs to do next. Number three. Get up and go to the city. There you'll be told what to do. And then Saul heard a loud sound, and suddenly it was darkness. It was all darkness. Saul had been this big, important guy, and suddenly he was helpless. So what did he do? He couldn't even see, you guys. Saul suddenly was blinded. He fell to his knees. He was so surprised, and he couldn't even see. So his friends helped him. He got on his way to Damascus, and he stayed right here. And for three days, he didn't eat anything. He didn't drink anything. All he did was pray. Show us praying. All he did was pray for three days in darkness while he couldn't see. So while this was happening, the word was getting out. Something crazy happened to Saul. We can't explain it. He heard a voice from Jesus, and now we can't see him. So, this other guy named Ananias had a vision. And we're going to hear about Ananias' vision. Where's my number four? The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street, after a man from Tarsus called named Saul. He is praying. Vision saw this in a man come and place his hands on him. That, man, that man's name is Ananias. The vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see him. So Ananias heard that from God, had a vision, and this is how Ananias replied Lord, I have heard, I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. That's right. So Ananias was like, I heard about this guy. He's not nice. And the high priest even said, it's okay if he arrests Christians. How do you think Ananias felt when God said, yes, show us Ananias. How would you feel? Wow, flat on the floor. Ananias was probably nervous, probably scared to go see Saul. But Ananias was faithful. So Ananias went, um, and Jesus even had more to say to Ananias. Where's number six? Go, I have chosen this man to work with him. He will now sign me to the Gentiles. So Jesus said, I know, I know what Saul has been doing, but go, that this guy is going to be about me now. He's going to be all about Jesus now. So Ananias went, he went all the way to where Saul was, and he came to talk to him. He saw Saul, he hadn't been eating or drinking, he was just praying, and this is what he said. Brother Saul. You saw how the Lord Jesus, he appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right away, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. And he started jumping for joy. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Praising God because of what God had done in his life. And he knew that Jesus was who he said he was. Thank you, actors. You may have a seat. Thank you, thank you. So, Saul had gone from someone who persecuted Christians, put them in jail. He said that Jesus was not who he said he was. Then he was blind for three days, and now he's saying, okay, God, I get it. I trust you. My life has been changed, right? And what did we say faith was? 
trusting God even when you can't see him, right? Funny how Saul couldn't even see for three days, and he came out on the other side with faith in God. So, what I want us to hear today is that knowing Jesus changes things. We can trust God, we can have faith in God, even when sometimes we can't see God, right? I'm gonna need one last volunteer who trusts me. Bentley. All right. Trust me. Now, Bentley, can you see anything? Are your eyes closed under there? No? Close them. How many fingers am I holding up? All right. Very good. So, Bentley says he trusts me. Bentley, I'm going to try to lead you back to your chair by just telling you where to go, okay? Turn around. Can you see anything? All right. Billy says he trusts me. I'm not trying to trick him. I want what's best for him. I don't want to embarrass him, right? All right, I want you to take two steps forward. Okay, now take a step to your right. Uh-uh. Another step to your right. One tiny step to your right. All right, now walk one step forward. Turn around. Now slowly sit down. <laughs> he made it! Okay. Bentley trusted me, even though he couldn't see. He had faith that I was going to get him to the place where he needed to be, right? Even though he couldn't see where he was going, he couldn't see me. He heard me, and he knew that I wanted what was good for him. And so even when we can't see God, we can trust that what God is saying to us is true, that God loves us, and we can have faith that he is going to do what is good for us, even though we can't see him right in front of us. So we have a new memory verse, and I want you to repeat after me, all right? Now faith is confidence, now faith is confidence. in what we hope for, what we hope for. and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11 1. Good. Can we do longer phrases this time? Are you ready? Yes. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for. And assurance about what we do not see. And assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11 1. Hebrews 11 1. Very good. And and I be, that's right. So this week when we're going about our days, maybe you're playing outside with your friends, maybe you're going to work, maybe you're having a hard conversation, we can trust God even though we can't see him in front of us, right? Have you ever been outside when it's really windy? Yeah? Can you see the wind? No. Well, you feel it, right? And you can see the trees moving. We can see God at work, even though we can't see God. We can see the trees moving, we can see trash maybe blowing around on the ground, even though you can't see the wind. And we can trust God that same way, that he's working in our lives, and we can have faith in that, even though we can't see God with us. So I want you to remember that this week. I'm going to pray for us. And then Michael's going to come up and lead us in our communion time. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for today. I thank you for all of these friends who are here and who are learning about faith and trusting you and learning about people who can be totally changed in their lives by Jesus. Help us to do that too. Help us to trust you even though we can't see you. In Jesus' name.
All right, I got a question for everybody this morning. Who in here likes Cheetos? Me. All right. Who in here likes Flamin' Hot Cheetos? I love Flamin' Hot Cheetos. I still remember the first time I ever had Flamin' Hot Cheetos. I was in fourth grade. You can put your hands down. It's not like I'm not gonna call on you to share about that. I remember being in fourth grade in Mr. Hiles class and my friend CJ had a bag of Flamin' Hot Cheetos and I was, I was terrified, I was so nervous because I had never had one before. He let me have one and it changed my life forever, right? <laughs> and so the thing about Cheetos is that when you're eating Cheetos, you get this stuff on your fingers, right? You, people, when you've been eating Cheetos, people know that you've been eating Cheetos, right? You can't really hide that very well. Especially Flamin' Hot Cheetos, it's got that red dye and sticks in your fingernails, right? I think that's kind of what we're talking about too, because when we are following God, when we are letting God's Spirit work in our lives, people can tell that, right? They can tell by the way that we act. Just like those Cheetos are maybe great evidence that we have been eating Cheetos, there's evidence that, that, that people can see in our lives when we follow God. And so Saul's life changed forever. He was going one way, and then he met Jesus. And he turned around, he completely changed his life. And he went in the opposite direction, and he brought thousands of people to the Lord. And we still talk about that today, and, and that can inspire us. What God can do with us and our lives when we give God those things. So, I'm going to ask, like I normally do, some questions about the Bible story and see how much y'all remember. Okay, where was Saul going to? Raise your hand. Where was Saul going to? Eva. Damascus. Damascus. Or whatever Eva says. Damascus, right? He's going to Damascus. And what was he going to do in Damascus? Noah. Arrest people. He was going to arrest people, and I think he thought he was going to end some people's lives, right? Because they were following Jesus? What a crazy thing to do, right? But he didn't know any better. He hadn't met Jesus yet. All right? And what sense did Saul lose for three days? Abby? Um, the scent to see. That's exactly right. He was blinded by the light, right? Okay, so um, as we go to our table of communion this morning, I'm going to ask the questions that I normally do. Um, what are we about to do? What are we about to do that we do every day, every Sunday? Communion. That's right, communion. We don't do everything every Sunday, but we do one thing every Sunday, and that's we take communion. Why do we do that every week? To remember Jesus. To remember Jesus, right. What do we do when we take communion? Okay. Drink bread and eat juice. Drink bread and eat juice, yes. <laughs> exactly. All right. Who would like to pray for us as we go to the table this morning? Cameron. Okay, bow your heads. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us all come together for Super Duper Family Sunday and letting us all worship God and learn about what faith is. Jesus name, pray. Amen. All right, we have community tables in the back. Uh, uh, one more song that we are going to sing before we leave today. I hate to break up all these wonderful conversations. You can continue those shortly. Um, I wanted to, to make a couple announcements, though. Uh, fine. Uh, Brother Chase Proud, if you are interested in learning more about his organization or what a potential mission trip next summer might look like for that, um, also, we will not be meeting here next Sunday. Uh, we will be joining at Woodmont Hills with them. I highly recommend going. I think it's going to be a really great 
uh, time of worship together. So um, I would I would love for you to join us there. Uh, they have an 8:30 service that's a cappella. They have an 11 service that is contempt or contemporary like ours. Um, so uh, those are things you can join with. Sunday school, if you want to join that, is at 9:45. So that's next Sunday. We will not be meeting here. All right, so um, we've got one last song we can sing, and then we will be good for the day. I hope you all have a great week. Thank <laughs> you.